वेलकम फ्रेंड्स टू दिस सेकंड डे ऑफ आवर थ्री डे इवेंट हियर फॉर द मेडिटेशन वर्कशॉप इन राइस लेक विस्कॉन्सन वंस अगेन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस मॉर्निंग सेशन येस्टरडे इन द टू सेशन वी हैड आई एक्सप्लेन टू यू द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ स्टेप नंबर वन नंबर टू एंड नंबर थ्री स्टेप नंबर वन that you must first locate yourself at the center of your head at the third eye center before you start meditation to make meditation effective if you haven't done that it's just a ritual then and not true meditation once you have established yourself there and feel that this body of yours is just around you it's not you it's around you and you are on the top of this body sitting inside then with that form of yours which is sitting inside start meditation not with the body but with the inner self that sits inside this body that self also is very similar to this one so it's not difficult to do it so you by practice you would be able to make it very easy every time you just sit and close your eyes you'll be there it's just a matter of practice the second step i said since the mind is constantly thinking of outside things and is the biggest distraction to our meditation try to control the mind to the extent you can by repetition of words given to you by your master very often masters give words which do not have much significance outside but they have significance inside these mantras and simrans and that are given to us they do not connect us with outside things otherwise one could be using a, a simple word that you like for example i wanted to one day practice a good good two word simran i said i'll keep on repeating and control the mind what were the two words shake is pizza i kept on repeating this attention would never go in i remembered all the places where i went to for shakey's pizza outside so that is why these words that are given to us are very often unrelated to anything outside but they are related to something inside and therefore they are carefully chosen these mantras are carefully chosen to draw our attention inside you can repeat any words if you keep on repeating the mind cannot think of other words but if the words you repeat themselves have a connection outside they are not effective that is why repeat the words which masters have chosen for you and they are beneficial in controlling the mind and you should use this system of repetition of words or what called repetition of mantra or doing simran as long as you can the recommended time for beginners for doing simran is about 2 hours so 2 hours a day if possible early morning if it's not possible you can break it up into more than one session say 1 hour in the morning 1 hour at night or an hour and a half in the morning half an hour at night if you are free in the afternoon you can take some session in the afternoon but with simran if you practice continuously you are practicing the simran with the mind not with the tongue it's not a spoken thing that you are speaking with your tongue as if you speak with your tongue it has no value the mind is still roaming around the purpose of controlling the mind by making the mind do something only happens if you do simran with the mind and that means the thoughts that you have convert the thoughts to the words of simran not add something to the thoughts by speaking from the tongue so that is why people do a lot of chanting and so on it doesn't take their attention inside the chanting is done with the tongue so the if you want to do chanting yes you do chanting with the mind so this is important as a very important second step to gain access to what is inside us the third thing i mentioned yesterday was that once you practice meditation by repeating mantra you will be able to hear sounds inside your head they are natural sounds they are coming from various areas 
some are physical some are astral some are causal some come from even higher and they represent the highest form of our consciousness there are several sounds coming and you play with them like you pick up sound different sounds coming you can pick up one then the other and play with them till you find the most melodious sound out of them whichever pulls you with melody attracts you more pick up that not the gross sounds which are just sounds maybe loud enough but not pulling you at all not attracting you at all so when you pick up the sound pick up the one that is most attractive now these are this is the third step to listen to the sound if you do meditation by simran regularly enough time simran can be done even when you are not doing meditation it can be done while you are walking it can be done you are doing things where you don't need your intellectual or your intelligence to be applied to something you are doing you can keep on doing simran you are doing cooking during cooking you can do simran simran can be done at any time if you practice simran at all possible times that you can it becomes a habit of the mind mind picks up habits very quickly if you just keep on repeating something so you can make simran a habit of the mind in which case you will find the mind repeats a simran even when you're not doing it when you're not even trying to do it and that way you can any time pause to see what's happening instead of thoughts simran is going on in your head and you are sleeping at night in the middle of the night you wake up simran is going on once great master was asked my master was asked by a disciple master how much meditation do you recommend in every 24 hours because we are told 2 and 1/2 hours is minimum we can't even do 2 and 1/2 hours great master said if you do 2 and 1/2 hours then you are doing 22 and 1/2 hours other things so that's uh, very unbalanced two and a half hours to spirituality and remaining 22 and a half hours to other activities you are all involved in other activities two and a half hours is not enough he said master what is your recommendation how much should we do he said my recommendation is do 23 and a half hours if you can if not 23 at least 22 and a half hours master how can one do it one has to work one has to eat food one has to sleep at night how can we do that he says meditation is not merely doing something to sit down somewhere close your eyes and do it meditation is remembering your master meditation is remembering the spiritual spiritual side of yourself inside which you can do all the time so therefore he said if you practice simran it becomes automatic that also becomes automatic for more than 22 hours and therefore you can when you think of master all the time that also become meditation to meditate on the memory of the master who you saw you meditate on the daily experiences you are having where you say this could not have happened but for master's grace and this will happen for initiates again and again in their life every initiate that i have spoken to has had these miracles happening after the session in daily life outside life and that is why when we thank master and remember so so many incidents happen where we can remember the master and we can make our simran automatic therefore we can do that kind of meditation to be really leading a spiritual life otherwise it's a small part time game and we are ready okay we'll do little bit this this uh, life then more we'll do next life more than third life will come for it maybe we'll complete our course in the fourth life sets of dial singh swami ji of agra who set up this radha swami faith he said we need four lives for this course so i'll tell you his exact phrase which is quoted as by him and translated for you एक जन्म गुर भक्ति जन्म दूसरे नाम जन्म तीसरे तुरिया पद चौथे में निज धाम ही सेज द फर्स्ट वन होल लाइफ कैन बी स्पेंट इन डिवोशन टू योर मास्टर 
and then get initiated by the I mean, by a perfect master in your next life. Third life you can reach the top of the causal plane. Only in the fourth life you can reach your true life, true home. So when you hear these things, that they think it's a long process. It's not a short process. People get impatient. Somebody came to me. He said, "I want radiant form ASAP." <laughs> I said, "Then ASAP? Yeah, you can get ASAP after you spent four lives." After four lives, it will be ASAP. There is a preparation. We go through a preparation. This is a long phase because we have been trapped here for so long. To go back to our true home after millions of years in a journey outside of our true home, there are so many small, small steps that come. Even obstacles come because we are trying to go through a phase of this physical world, which is controlled by. a negative force there are two forces created by the creator the positive force and the negative force the negative force pervades the physical experience pervades the astral experience pervades the causal experience imagine these three grand regions of experience in meditation are all controlled by a negative power what is that negative power we call it kaal which means time time is trapping us in this if there was no time you would be at home time is a prison and the prison runs through these three courses we are right now when we say four lives two hours three hours what are we talking about time is time that's creating the whole problem time runs everything in the in these three universes and that is why time is a very big trap and we call it kaal some people have not understood that kaal literally means time so they thought it is some negative devil or somebody sitting somewhere no there are devils sitting but many devils are sitting in ourselves in fact a little devil is in each one of us <laughs> and we call it our mind a mind is little devil and both soul and mind are sitting together so the positive and negative are sitting in each one of us and they are also sitting all around creation so when we are passing through these negative territories run by negative entities there is a great pressure of negativity to stop us from going home and that is why lot of obstacles come on the way to our true home and these obstacles are created by the negativity around us negative within us most importantly our own mind our own mind is distracting us more than anything else so that is why time is taken to go out of this system and that time is the prison we are trying to find a way out of time in time so that is why it takes so long sometimes and people get impatient you have to have patience if you want to find results don't give up don't give up i tried so long it didn't work well it was not supposed to work that time till you learn certain lessons so we learn many lessons during our spiritual growth and those lessons include the fact that you can have the experiences of up and down in meditation just like you have experience of up and down in life this physical world in which we are coming as human being is a world of up and down is a world of high and low we all go through it we all have good times and bad times i have never met a person anywhere in my life who had only good time all his life nor anyone who never had a bad time therefore it's a combination of the two why is that because the setup here is that there are nice places in this creation we call heavens if you are doing all good things and your karma is very high you will go to heaven and spend a lot of time there if you do all bad things in another place is called hell you go to hell and spend time there both these exist in the astral plane there very large number of heavens and large number of hells is not one only there are lots of them now you can actually experience them 
in meditation i go and see they visit them but don't stay there too long not at visible i remember we had a disciple of great master one of the three ladies we used to call bbs those three ladies used to attend on the great master's daily needs and one was tall stout strong she controlled everything by her personality so the other two were subservient to her she controlled great master's house great master's wardrobe great master's daily living and she stayed there in, with great master right to the end till great master's end of his life she was there the second one was tall but lean and she was the next in command and she used to help and she because she could not get that close to great master she was interested with the kitchen of the great master and made food for him she was very happy to do the same of cooking food for the great master but when she would bring what they call thali or a platter of food to the great master's place the tall lady would be waiting there your territory ends here now i take it in so i remember these things about uh, uh, the local drama within the dera great master there was a third one who was short and not so assertive like these two and she was doing meditation more than the others but she had a higher accent ascent into the higher planes but she could not find either place in great master's house nor find a place in the kitchen so she was made in charge of running the general kitchen for the people which they called the langar so she would work in the langar making chapatis bread by hand they used to make it by hand and but she did so much meditation her house was little little hut was given to her <clears throat> i and my family also had a little house next to her hut so we were very close to her and saw her life and how she was leading her life and very great woman and she one day was crying loudly in her little room and we came out and we tried to open the door it would open other people were called in we bro broke open the door to see maybe she is in great panic she was crying she couldn't stop crying like she was screaming and we said bibi what happened what's happened she wouldn't speak just kept her cry so we rushed to great master house and said the bibi is crying he said i'll come and see her so he came and she was crying and he said she wouldn't listen to anybody else but when great master spoke bibi what's wrong with you she said i am in hell he said how did you go to hell he said out of curiosity in my meditation i said let me go and see hell and master i did it on my own i did not even ask you for it please forgive me he said is anybody hurting you what do you think and she described the torture that was going on to people who were in hell which was making her cry and great master said is anybody hurting you she said no he said why are you crying he said i am crying because i can't afford to see i can't even see the suffering of the other people here in hell so great master said listen to my voice and come out so she came out and put her head on great master's feet and begged pardon for this journey then great master addressed us who were sitting around he said sometimes curiosity can really be dangerous in meditation first of all when you reach inside try to go towards the very manifested form of the master before you make any trips to the astral region or the regions master is waiting inside for you go with the master then say master you show me whatever you want see whatever you like inside with the master not on your own i i am pointing out that there are heavens and hells 
in the astral plane don't go alone to visit them especially the hells good people who done excellent good they'll go to heaven and enjoy their time and then come back when the time is over evil people will go to hell and then spend time there how do we come to a physical form in the planet earth here with a combination of karma good and bad that is how physical life is created with a combination of karma which is high and low good and bad and that is why we all have good times and bad times we are here one has to accept this if you don't want to accept ups and downs then you won't be here so that is why it's just a natural thing that you are here a an american disciple a great master you might have heard his name dr julian johnson julian johnson when he first came to the great master he was very impressed with the great master's powers and his great mercy and compassion for everybody so he would bring up cases of his friends in the united states master in kentucky i have a friend his wife is suffering so much can you help and great master would say yes i will pray to baba ji baba jamal singh his master to help your friend so he would ask for these kind of interventions over and over again then one after he had stayed in the dera for some time because i could speak english i used to go to a english speaking school so he used to take me along for walks we used to go to the river for walks almost every day when i was in the dera and one day he tells me on the way what a mistake i have been making trying to get intervention of great master in the karma of people i should have realized the ups and downs of karma are the platter given to us as a gift that is what is giving us human life and human life is necessary for us to be able to go to a true home and he said never again am i going to ask for any intervention it's a good thing that we have high and low good and bad so this is something very significant on the spiritual path to understand we are human beings because of this combination of our karmic pattern and that is why i am always saying don't worry be brave go through the low karma with as much cheerfulness as you can what masters do is if they find that the karma is unbearable or difficult they will intervene to make it light they will make it is a big thing they can make into a small thing but the events still take place the events take place and you you go through it you knew you know at that time how bad it could be but for what great master intervention that you could pass through it so easily so that is why great masters do help perfectly big masters help but they help us to cope up with situations so one should not feel that we are getting no help because we are going through some low period or we are going through some sad events or something they happen they happen as part of our life everybody's life so keeping this in mind remember these events will come and go your meditation should not be affected by these you should not say i stop meditation because master did not help me in this situation he is helping he is helping for you to cope up more easily to bear these things more easily and that is why <clears throat> it is said that to live in his will is to surrender to his will they talk a lot of surrender they what is surrender surrender is when you say master i will accept what is your will and i am living according to your will now after that you can't then make a judgment on what's happening because you left to to his will then live your life the best you can with all the strength you can have great master used to say you have to be a warrior to be on this path because you have to fight negativity you have to fight difficult circumstances therefore you have to be very brave to be on the spiritual path it's not a path for cowards he used to say it's a path for brave people so i am mentioning these things to make it clear that do not worry so much about the ups and downs of life meditation can continue at all times sometimes we notice 
that people meditate more when they are in, in, in bad times. A good time they forget. No, no, meditation is good times also as much as in bad times. Keep meditation a regular part of your life. Make it life, spiritual life. And then meditation works. So these three things which I mentioned yesterday, at the level of the wakeful human being, they are accomplished one after the other. Seating yourself at third eye center, then when you are comfortable and sure you are seating there, because if you are not seated comfortably there, you slip out very often into the body awareness that you are sitting on a chair. You say, I am sitting here and if you are not careful, not established daily on that, you suddenly feel you are still sitting on the chair. This ability to be able to pull your attention up to the head has to be like you lifted yourself up to the head and you are now there and not on the chair. The body is in the chair, you are lifted up. I had a lot of problem after initiation to do this. And I was doing meditation like most of my friends, just sitting on the body and then closing my eyes and repeating words. Nothing would happen. For years nothing happened. So I said there's something wrong. Then great master emphasized this point that you have to first sit there before you start meditation. So I said, Master, very difficult. I have tried. I keep on sitting where I am sitting, on the floor. I, I can't find the floor here. He said, come, I'll help you. So he said, raise your finger like this. Raise it and take it up. I took it up. Can you see the finger? No. Do you know the finger is up? Yes. You can't see it, but you know you are there. Now imagine you are sitting up on your finger. Can you imagine? I said, that I can imagine. It's just pure imagination. Yes, I am there, I am myself there sitting, I can feel it. Okay, now bring the finger down, slowly. Are you still there? Yes, I am still there. Come right close here. Are you still there? Yes. Jump in. I jumped in. They sat there very easily. So it was, of course, his grace that he did this little thing for me. But I realized that it is not something that you have to sit in the chair and then make an image of yourself. It's not that you make a little picture of yourself and say, I'm sitting there. Because then you are still, your whole attention is right here. You have to raise yourself and sit there. Needs practice. So don't be in a rush in step one. Get comfortable that the moment you close your eyes, you are there. And by the way, when I say close your eyes, it's only for some time. Afterwards, you don't have to close your eyes and you can be there. You can do meditation with open eyes. So that is why it's important to be there. Once you are there, practice. Take time. No rush. When you repeat the Simran, Repeat it all the time, day and night, as much as you can. And especially when you do meditation, listen attentively. Don't forget, it's the listening capacity you are going to develop more than anything else. Listening is the key. When you listen attentively, you'll also be able to listen to other sounds. So the capacity to listen puts your attention inside better. So you pull yourself by listening and then the sound start coming. Then you play with the sound and pick up the right ones. These are very mechanical, mental operations which we can do without effort very easily. They can pull us up. Astral plane is not far at all. It's very easy to reach. Every time we imagine things, we are imagining in the astral plane, but we don't realize it. Because bulk of our attention is here, we use little bit of attention to imagine things. But what you imagine here is what is coming from there. All power of imagination is coming from there. All ideas that people have, people invent new things, scientists come up, they do. All that is coming from the astral plane. All new ideas are coming from there. Because that's the world of ideas. <coughs> that... Socrates and Plato, they were explaining 
how the world of ideas is more real than this world. The Greek philosophers explained that the world of ideas is more real, but looks like unreal. Because it's just an idea. When the idea is more real, because if the idea were not there, nothing would be here. Nothing would be here. There won't be a creation here if there was no idea. Therefore, and, and uh, I think Plato gives a very good example of the reality of the world of ideas. He says, look at a simple thing, like a chair. What is a chair? It's a word, English word chair. There are many equivalents in other languages. What is a chair? When a baby is born and grows up, hear the word chair, and he is made to sit on a chair, the baby's chair there is only that small little chair on which the baby is seated. No other chair is a chair. When he sees more chairs as he grows up, the meaning of the word chair expands. The larger number of chairs he sees, the meaning expands. They are all chairs. They are all different. But we use one word for all of them. Plato explains that if there was no idea of a chair, we wouldn't have a chair at all. How did the idea come? He says, comes from concepts. Concepts come from causal plane. All concepts come from causal plane. All ideas come from astral plane. That is a big thing to remember. All concepts come from the causal plane. All ideas come from the astral plane. The concept creates the ideas and the ideas create the physical universe. So when you say you are sitting on the floor, everybody would sit on the floor in this whole world. There was no chair. So the concept that one could sit higher than this also is possible. That you can be higher than the ground, maybe. Then the idea came in the astral plane. Yes, we can de design something that is higher. So the idea of a chair was born. When a chair was created, it is one idea of one chair that's created all the chairs of the world today. Therefore, he says, except for that one chair in the world of ideas, there would be no chair anywhere. Everything that you see here is created the same way. It's all from the origin of a concept created in the causal plane, brought, brought up as ideas in the astral plane and made physical, visible in the physical plane. So that is why it's important that when we have some ideas coming, we think they are just mental thoughts. They are real. The whole world is created from that reality. Similarly, imagination, ideas, all these are coming from astral plane. And we, because we take this physical reality to be the only reality, we make it unreal. We call it unreal. When you will be at that level, you will find the ideas are more real than the physical world. And whatever you imagine there will become a reality. Whatever you imagine can become a reality in the astral plane. So, it is not something set up like this. We have great powers of imagination. But the imagination extends to even knowing more through imagining than we have the power in the physical plane. For example, you imagine that's your future, becomes your future right there. So, it's very different from here. So, when we experience that, we have to get used to that. There used to be a Mastana, intoxicated guy. He was from Balochistan and he had come to the Dera, became a great disciple, a great master. And he was a tall guy and uh, I became a little friendly with him because in Seva, we used to carry bricks. We used to go together to carry bricks. So I used to carry one brick on my head. He used to carry a whole basket of bricks. That is the contribution we two made to the current building sitting here, South Sangar, in the Dera. It's a good opportunity to do Seva like that. On the way, we would talk about our experiences. And he used to share his experiences. He said, I could never believe 
that we have to relearn our our stay and learn the, even our language learn how to use language in the astral plane that when i withdraw my attention there he said i have to relearn so much because we have been away for so long from that experience it almost looks like re relearning there so these are experiences that you should go into slowly and enjoy relax there is no rush when you have waited millions of years what's the rush in getting in a couple of lifetimes even of course i always like you to go in the same lifetime in which you get initiated that's the best but if you have to wait a little bit we have waited very long for this have patience don't be in a hurry now these practices the pull of the sound can take you to the causal plane meditation by closing your inner eyes of the astral self can open up the causal plane how will you recognize it if you are not being guided by a perfect living master right from the beginning don't try to jump ahead of him go with the master everywhere if you do meditation and you are on your own you will recognize by the simple turn change in the sound the most important change will be <clears throat> in the atmosphere the, the color of the sky we have a physical sky here space is created with skies when we say we have space here space and time is sky that's we can see there is a lot of space sitting inside a room we don't know how big it is when we go out in the open you see the whole sky that we say is a big space the sky in the physical plane is colored and lighted by the sun and the earth when it moves we get darkness and light we get darkness at night light in the day this is a dual kind of uh, lighting of a sky it's not always lit up it lit up half the time and dark half the time this is the nature of the physical universe that the duality is being expressed even looking at what is natural thing like a sky is dark now it's lighted so this duality ends in the astral plane this particular duality of the sky ends and there it is always like a twilight time like we have late afternoon when it's light but not too too strong that is the color of the sky 24/7 all the time in the astral plane so there is no darkness as such in the astral plane but there is not very bright and dark not that that great variation also so you will know because everything that will happen in the astral plane will be in that sky in that atmosphere when you go to the causal plane the sky becomes very bright very bright brighter than you see in here but the color will be color of the sky will be like an orange color like a golden color if you have seen a setting sun when the sun is just setting when you can see it clearly otherwise when it's too hot when you can't see when setting half set look at the color of the setting sun if the that setting sun is stretched all over the sky that's the causal sky and sometimes in the middle of your meditation sessions now i got more reports about many of you having wonderful experiences in yesterday sessions you may have glimpses of that sky and that's just a glimpse of the causal plane the sky changes and the and you can't describe the the sky after that because it's totally different indescribable because it is not in space at all the sky the after that the way we are as souls living is totally different and i have no words to describe if i could i'll make a story i just tell stories people have told stories earlier also even mystics have told stories about that but it's not describable because it's outside of our understanding at this time so the skies will tell us where we are but my recommendation is if you are initiated by a perfect living master you wait to meet the master 
in the astral plane. You can have some experiences in the astral plane, like flying in the sky. You can fly any way you like on your own. You can see distant places. But when you go higher and up in flying, very often people have experiences of having seen crossing even the moon and the sun and stars. When you are going that high, you will see the radiant form of your master who initiated you in the same form as you saw in the physical world. Then the form can change. Your form can change. Master's form can change. But you will always know that's the same master. It will be automatic that you will know it's the master. Even both the forms are changed because form will change many times. The reason for that is that this form we have is a very short term, one life form. We have lived through several forms, even as human beings. All those forms are collectively there in the astral plane. And you can from time to time see different forms of yourself. Many of you saw your old forms in the mirrors. You have written to me now, last night I was reading some reports from many of you what you saw in the mirror during meditation yesterday. So, but you, the original form will be exactly the same as you see in the physical plane. If you do that, first it will look like you can see the master, then he disappears. Sometimes looks at you come very close to the master and then you see that he receded, gone. Master is not moving anywhere, our attention is not fixed yet. It's game of attention. If you can place your attention on the on the form of the master, we call it radiant form because visible in dark. So the radiant form of the master is not very different from the form you have seen outside. So when you see that form, try to be patient. Try to be patient with that form. And use something that I am going to talk about now. <coughs> the most important part of the spiritual practice I am going to talk about now. Look at that form with love and devotion. The many, any way you can express your love and devotion, express it. The form will stay with you. The attention will be pulled to the form faster with your love and devotion than any other means. To tell you the truth, this is a path of love and devotion. The rest is mechanical, rest is mental. Spiritual thing is love and devotion. Now, causal plane you will cross with the master. Best is to go with the master. There is no way, no meditation that you can do to cross the causal plane. I have met so many saints, mystics, yogis, swamis in my life deliberately go on to see what they teach. Their teaching is all confined to the causal plane. But they call it true home, call it the ultimate realization because all things that we see here are created from there. To that extent they are right. That's the great power. Our universal mind there at the causal plane is creating everything including our individual minds. But that is not the spiritual place which is our true home. Because true home cannot be achieved by any effort of ours. All effort is mental here and we reach the causal plane. To go beyond that, as I mentioned, a hint gave yesterday, requires someone to pull us from beyond. The path of love and devotion alone takes us beyond the mind. Neither Simran will take us, nor astral Dhyan will take us. Nor anything that we are doing here is only confined to these three worlds. To go beyond, Master pulls us. He starts pulling us even when we are here. We can't see it. He wants us to complete our journey in this very life. He doesn't want to postpone. We are distracted. Too many attachments, too many desires of things outside. Therefore, we delay our own journey. Masters, masters are keen that you go beyond the mind as fast as you can. Then you can take rest. 
वंस यू हैव डिस्कवर्ड हु यू आर देन यू कैन रिलैक्स वी डू नॉट डिस्कवर आवर सेल्फ एज ए सोल टिल वी हैव क्रॉस द माइंड एंड टू क्रॉस द माइंड ओनली लव एंड डिवोशन काउंट नथिंग एल्स ना इफ इट इज ट्रू सम पीपल समटाइम्स आस्क मी इफ यू हैव इंटेंस लव एंड डिवोशन फॉर द मास्टर इज मेडिटेशन नेसेसरी माई आंसर इज नो इफ यू कैन हैव दैट अनफेलिंग फेथ लव एंड डिवोशन फॉर द मास्टर दैट नेवर वेवर्स इट्स अनशेकेबल मेडिटेशन बिकम रिडंडंट because that is what you will take you there meditation is just a means a small means great master even said meditation is not capable of taking us anywhere he said meditation great master's words is like a thermometer we use thermometers to measure our temperature in fever whether we have fever or not thermometer does not create the fever it only measures it he said love and devotion creates our progress meditation measures it how much we have done that's the importance of love and devotion this whole path is based upon love and devotion if you want to go to your true home beyond the mind other things are i have been mentioning great experiences you can have good they are good also but they don't take you out of the cycle of birth even you spend long time there you can spend long time is all time in all the three regions you are bound by time suppose you say oh, i have done very good work i want to go to heaven okay you go for a thousand years then what you would come back exactly in the same situation here in indian mythology indian hindus worship lord krishna avatar of vishnu the god of sustenance and if you hear krishna stories you are amazed krishna when he was young he was a cow herd he used to take the village cows out to graze ordinary life people sometimes totally misrepresent what he was ordinary guy in a village i have been to his village where he was born where he lived the whole area he was ordinary guy taking cows he was enlightened he was enlightened at a young age so he could talk about things which normal people could not talk about he had a very good friend of his his name was udo krishna and udo were good friends and they would go out together krishna was little older than udo one day this is the story the recorded story i am just repeating one day krishna was going and he saw an ant crawling on the ground and he looked at the ant little ant and he told udo udo we cannot understand the nature of karma what karma can do he said look at this ant this ant was once brahma the creator of this universe from the causal plane he created the universe and he was brahma because of his good karma of the past became brahma when the time was up he stood as an ant by previous karma before that it's endless a creator from the causal plane who the whole world worships now became an ant how is it possible well that's how the karma works it is relentless there is no atonement in karma people think we can get atonement that we can wipe out karma by some means karma is never wiped out karma for millions of years continues to stay with us so long as the mind is there the same mind holds the entire karma creates life after life and if it is only human life one would be happy with this we can get little improvement in human life no you can go through the whole cycle of other life forms including higher life forms including life forms of the rulers of the higher universes rulers who created the universes you can get those forms and still come back this is not a real liberation the only liberation from the whole system is if you can go beyond your mind
beyond the universal mind and discover the soul is not subject to any of this soul is not subject to any of this stuff we just provide soul provides life to the mind provides life to the astral self provides life to this physical body makes all of them alive so that they can experience soul makes all things into awareness and consciousness it is actually consciousness that creates all this so that is why there is no real salvation like we say there is no real liberation from this cycle of death and birth birth and death this is this they have emphasized in many scripture they emphasize the biggest trap is you can't get out of birth and death birth and death in different forms and that's because of the capture being captured by time here so there is why these perfect living masters have come to pick up marked souls they have not come to disturb the whole world they have not come to disturb a creation they are part of the creator they have not come to destroy their own creation they are not against the creation they are for the creation they like the creation they want to souls to experience the creation but souls that get tired of this creation they have made a way out that they can go back home beyond the mind as it happens the negative entity wants to assert itself running these three universes therefore the negative entity wants to stop every soul that's going out and creates as many hurdles as possible and we go through them some people say after initiation i have more difficulties in my life than i had before and i say great blessing and they don't like that answer i said this is an acceleration of your karma that what you would have done in three lives is being done in one aren't you happy to go but we don't see that where we are trapped we have been trapped so long so that is why these perfect living masters when they come they come to pick up souls who are ready to go beyond the mind most of us are not ready to go beyond the mind because we are wanting things to be done here master please improve my health i have a problem master my son is not studying properly please give some grace master i have no money can i win that lottery next time <laughs> master can i get something better here we all our requests or things right here and some people who are spiritually minded they must they like to go to heaven must they like to go away from here they are still playing some are even going to the origin let's go to the origin of the universe people are worshiping gods and goddesses in in indian hindu religion and they have given different roles to them and the very nature of time is expressed by the gods the three essential gods they call brahma vishnu and shiva are nothing more than beginning middle and end everything in these three worlds has a beginning middle and end everything without exception except the soul which is beyond the, these three worlds the soul alone exists beyond these three worlds and that is why we have a problem here love and devotion for a perfect living master who initiates us is the way out so many of you are initiated by perfect living masters i am so happy to sit amongst you so happy to share this with you because you are marked to go back home all we are doing is to satisfy our mind oh we can also do something okay you do little bit so little tiny and the rest is done by master we have very little power we don't even know how to express love and devotion we try to learn simple thing like that how can one be devoted when we use two words love and devotion obviously there is two things happening yes love pulls us and we become devoted automatically that's why the two words are used devotion is a response to love we have very mixed feelings about love but the love of a perfect living master is so pure great unconditional when that pulls we become devotees with devotion that is why love and devotion go together 
if we can express our love in any way we can just as a response to our devotion is good enough for us if we can start our meditation from the very first step the three steps i mentioned if we can start these three steps from the very first step with love and devotion what a big head start it is that is why i now recommend to you that meditation to be really successful to take us beyond the mind should start with love and devotion therefore i gave a very small simple experiment yesterday to imagine that your master has come inside is sitting in front of you many of you liked it today let us have an experience that your whole experience of gathering yourself at the head is in the company of your master when you fly fly with the master use imagination at the time being till you find that you can really fly the master when you do that you will find that your love and devotion will grow automatically in the company of the master so if you are all ready close your eyes How many of you enjoyed this meditation session? How many of you felt that I should not have counted five? You could have continued. Very, very good. Meditation should be enjoyed, not made into a chore. Oh, I can't sit that long. If you meditate, love and devotion, and manifest the master, you will always enjoy it. you would like to meditate more not less you will be in a state of meditation automatically that's how it should be done love and devotion for the master essential part of meditation all the time from beginning to the end it's very interesting that when we are trying to meditate with our own effort it's very difficult to stay in distractions are very strong when we are meditating with love and devotion for the master you will notice the distractions are much less just the thought in our head of meditating with love and devotion changes the meditation it makes it easier than when we struggle with it don't make meditation a struggle meditation is a great visitation with your master and in a different area in exploring different areas how many of you could fly with the master very good was it a great flight i have always enjoyed my flights with the master i think it's a great experience it's amazing how much experience we can have now we meditate with these five words which have been given by some masters the mantra i said the mechanical use of those words is to replace the words of thought that's just the mechanical part but there is a bigger part that when we are initiated by a perfect living master whatever words he gives us to repeat he empowers them he puts his power into those words and what is empowerment empowerment means if you were repeating those words mentally or we were with your tongue negativity will keep away from you that's a big thing we are living in a world surrounded by negativity and here we can repeat words and keep negativity away so that is why use these words also when you encounter a negative situation and it will disappear some people say that we are attacked by negative entities use words negative entities run away from these words given by a perfect living master that's another very big use when you are flying with a master if sometime a negative entity want to appear as your master if you are using those words it will be your master and not a negative entity there's a big safeguard 
so many people ask me how am i sure what i'm seeing is real or is just made up by mind repeat the words if while you are repeating the words what you are seeing including the master is real it is the master so it is a big safeguard given by empowerment of the words master gives us a big way to be safe about it so that is why now supposing we were to do only meditation with love and devotion it will be enough with faith now faith is also important what is faith where does faith come from does faith come from experience some people tell me if i see something i have faith that's not called faith that's called seeing that's called experience faith is to faith have faith in something that we haven't seen when we have faith in something we haven't seen with our eyes that's faith that it can be completely a blind faith we are believing somebody telling us something and we have blind faith is there a difference between blind faith and faith that is not blind which i call living faith yes there is a difference faith comes from partial experience like if i were to walk five steps and i am told there is a sixth seventh step because i walked five i can have faith there will be fifth and sixth is part experience and the experience generating faith in what i have experienced can extend further this is living faith as you grow in faith the faith grows with you or like all living things blind faith never grows somebody has said god is sitting there we believe it it's blind faith if we experience something every day more and more it's living faith so that is why to get living faith unshakable faith we base it on experience not of the faith but what is prior to the faith which leads to the next step then we have more faith then reach the next step more faith it is much better to have a living faith based on partial experience which leads to more experience and not that we have blindly following somebody what he says in this path great master said there is no scope for blind faith in your spiritual life no scope for blind faith is not a religion most religions are based on blind faith this the scripture says the book says so and so says believe it period does your own life correspond with that no there is blind faith if you are having experiences in life that lead to that belief that that is living faith so always believe what you see what you hear from anybody including me what you are hearing don't believe it have faith in what's your experiences if you have partial experience yes the rest can also come so go step by step what you have actually experienced of course if you already had experience that's not faith so the experience faith is just beyond the experience you've just had and that's how it grows the old story of two little children who went to the beach because on the beach there was a ice cream ice cream vendor he used to bring good ice cream so this is a story they to tell in india that indian rupees the the ice cream cost 5 rupees so two young boys one of them had 5 rupees in his pocket and he took his friend for ice cream that we'd share the ice cream on the way to the ice cream vendor they see a holy man sitting on the sand making sand homes sand houses beautiful sand houses very impressive so the boy with the 5 rupees in his pocket he was so tempted to see those he said i like to buy one of the sand houses so the his friend said we came for ice cream not for sand he said but i like it so he asked that holy man can i buy one of these houses and the holy man said do you have the price to pay he said how much is the price he said 5 rupees 
he said and give five rupees take it so he gave his five rupees and he bought a plywood and took the sand home with him back home his friend was uh, so angry at him we came for ice cream you are carrying sand with you what a bad deal it is so the, this the friend who was feeling so bad that i never had ice cream and the guy is only spent his 5 rupees on sand at night had a dream in the dream he felt he was flying in the sky and he was surprised to see in the sky houses lit up with light that they were almost made up of light and he saw those houses looked like the houses very similar to what that holy man was making with the sand he said oh my god he was making those small sand homes from heaven which i can see up there and as he flew along the houses he saw one house exactly like the one which his friend bought and he saw the name of his friend written outside the house he said he got a house in heaven for 5 rupees <laughs> what a fool i was and he woke up and he woke up and he ran to his friend's house he said you got that house for 5 rupees i'll give you 10 rupees for it just give it to me and he said no you don't have to uh, buy this house you can go and buy for 5 rupees another house from the holy man on the on the beach so this friend ran to the holy man on the who was still making houses so he said i want to buy a house holy man said have you brought the price he said i have got 5 dollars 5 rupees he said the price is 5000 rupees he said what happened what kind of inflation is this <laughs> yesterday was 5 rupees today is 5000 holy man said no it's not inflation your friend bought the house without seeing it he bought it on faith you come after seeing it the price is always high when you just see things and buy if you do it on faith you get a big bargain so this is just a little story about faith that faith is something that helps us and it is we have to have some faith to move forward why would we take the first step if we have no experience and no faith we take the very first step in anticipation this first step will work if first step works then faith develops second can also work if second fails we go back to first so that is why faith grows with our experiences meditation is a great way to have experiences inside and outside which builds our faith that's according to me that's the main use of meditation to build our faith which increases automatically our love and devotion for the master faith and love and devotion go together if you have no faith you cannot have love and devotion the two to go together only when you have faith in your master you get love and devotion automatically if faith is lost love and devotion also go by the wayside so meditation helps us in developing doesn't matter how much we meditate my own experience shows with all my friends who have been meditating for so many years that regular meditation helps a lot compared to sporadic meditation if you meditate every day it is far more valuable than meditating on weekends for example it appears to me that if you create a gap in your meditation you almost start from square one every time you go back to the same place and start all over again and have no further experience except what you had day one but if you meditate every day you can see some progress ahead progress may be slow but it is there then if you meditate regularly your mind is set up in a certain way that you are able to observe more miracles of master during the day during that day you meditate in the morning during the day things will happen which will remind you of master again and again sometimes i call them coincidences coincidences are not accidents coincidences are a way of expressing an experience outside based on the experience inside 
intuition sometimes give you knowledge insight you so intuitively you feel something there no reason for it but you feel it and you don't know can i be sure about it these questions come in our mind i have an intuitive feeling this is going to happen can i be sure about it you drive your car there's a big ad put up on a hoarding outside using a few words corresponding to your inner intuition an outward symbol confirming your inner intuition if you begin to be observant of these things you'll see every day what you are feeling and knowing inside is being repeated in little little events outside and confirming you get confirmation outside because the spiritual experiences are not merely confined to what you can see in meditation they are equally confined equally available outside the equally available outside our life changes outside we feel very strong love for people we feel very close to people we feel the souls we feel their souls we feel they are all the same people coming from the same place they are all souls the whole attitude changes and hatred is replaced gradually by love for the very people you are hating you fall in love with those people there is a very big change that takes place by meditation inside and this effect outside so when people sometimes ask how will we know we are making progress or not i said you can see the progress inside and outside both it's not near necessarily if you meditate regularly you will notice some things if you are very angry person you will get less angry your level of anger will drop you won't find it necessary to shout or yell or anybody because you will say what the use of it the attitude towards anger towards lust towards greed towards possessiveness all change they change gradually and the anger is attacked first then lust is attacked then possessiveness greed lust to be attacked is your own ego pride claiming that i know everything i do this thing that becomes slow you observe these other people start observing it in you so there are progress can be measured both with what is happening inside in meditation and outside let us have one more wonderful session of meditation with love and devotion close your eyes how many of you enjoyed this session of meditation very good very good see meditation is being becoming more enjoyable that's a good sign you should always enjoy your meditation always pull for i want to meditate i wish i get little more time it the more you enjoy meditation the more the pull for more meditation will increase is it's, uh, it's not something to be considered a chore or i have to do two and a half hours i promised to do two and a half hours i can't do it i'm feeling so guilty not that way as i said if you do regular meditation even short periods your while life is busy we have obligation karmic obligations in this life you start with 5 minutes in the morning 5 minutes at night and then extend the time if you can is good enough if it is regular every day it is better to do 5 minutes a day than 2 and 1/2 hours every weekend that's my experience keep the momentum continuity of it all the time so start the morning with your master 5 minutes end the day with the master before sleeping master will be with you 24/7 is that simple so master is going to take you to your true home not your mind not your thoughts not your effort remember this is master's grace that plays what is the role of effort and grace i can tell you in the beginning 100% effort at the end 100% grace zero effort and how does this take place 
you gradually see that your effort is not useful. Your effort is futile. It's not even working the way you thought it will. Then grace is coming because experiences are coming. So ultimately, when you discover 100% grace, then you look back. Even the effort was part of the grace. You would not even make the effort if the grace was not there. The whole game of meditation going to a true home is a game of grace of a perfect living master who has come to take us home. He has come to take us home no matter what. If we have marked souls for whom he has come, he will take us back. It's only for the little time that we are on our way back home that we have all these questions, all these efforts, all these things that we are doing. Well, enjoy even that. Enjoy your little efforts. Enjoy how the so puny those efforts will look later on. You yourself realize this all grace of the Master. If you want to pray for something, prayer is for asking for something. Pray for more grace. Some people pray, Master, uh, grant us more power to do more meditation. I have never done that. Very dangerous. You will get caught up in your intellectual meditation all the time. Oh, I ask for it, I can do more, I can do and you spend hours, then more frustration comes. Why is it not working? Therefore, when you have a chance to pray, pray for more grace, more grace, more grace, and you get everything, including meditation, including with effortless meditation. This is truly an effortless path. When somebody else pulls me, how can I say I make an effort? If somebody else has come to take me home and carries me home, how can I say it was my effort? Where a little baby, a little child is carried by the mother, does the baby say, I am making an effort to be carried by my mother? <laughs> Masters carry us like that. Like a mother carrying a baby, the master carries us to our true home where we are a marked soul. It's as simple as that. <coughs> Therefore, Ask for grace, ask for more grace, and ask for more, more time with Master in meditation, in thoughts, in walking around, every time seeing Master around you. He's always around you. If he's initiated by a perfect living Master, it may, he's not visible because your eyes are only tied with the what is visible. If you start seeing invisible things, which are astral things, you see Master with you all the time. So this is a great path. I'll take a break now and see you again about 3 o'clock. Thank you. <laughs>